Eleven, a developer uses background process automation on a single attended robot. What is a characteristic of the background process? Okay, this option is wrong because according to the documentation, the attended robot can execute multiple background processes concurrently. So it doesn't say that there's only you can only use two maximum background process and well this uh, this is not the answer as well because background process project should not use ui automation activities and this option is also wrong because click and type into activities or ui automation activities and the background process cannot use these activities so this one is correct use foreground activity can transition a background process to the foreground so we will select this answer during the testing phase of developing a process there was a timeout error the development team wants to debug the process they need to know which activity started and ended before the timeout occurred so to ensure the lags provide this descriptive information in orchestrator which lagging level must be set well the answer is verbose because the verbose level logs a message for both the activity start and end, plus the values of the variable and arguments that are used. So, yes, the answer is verbose for this question. A developer notices that in a process that uses the robotic enterprise framework, sometimes the initialization state fails with an application exception. By default, what happens if the initialization state fails? Well, if we check in the UI path, here in the initialization state we can see that the let me just uh, scroll down we can see that the destination is the end process if it fails so the answer is it should go to end process so it will not perform any retry so this one is wrong again this one is wrong there will be no retry and this should be the correct answer execution goes to the end process state without any retries so let's check the next question a developer created a retry scope activity as shown in the following graphic the web page automated in the sequence is shown below and the element defined in the element exists activity which is this already exists when the sequence is run so clicking the refresh button will not update the web page what is the content of the output panel? Alright, so I copied this workflow, so let's test and see. So I will click run file to test this. And here we can see in the output panel that it print refresh button was clicked once. And it is because uh, the action will always, or the uh, retry action will always execute at least one. And inside this action, we have the click and the lag message activity. That's why it prints that uh, text in the output panel. Then after it validates the condition, it results into true because uh, as mentioned in the exhibit, the element already exists. So it will exit the retry scope activity. But if the element does not exist when the workflow runs, then the output could be different. But in this exhibit, we can see that the output is refresh button was clicked. So we just need to select it, that answer in here. So this one should be. Check the next answer or the next question rather. A developer created a process that gathers a listing of tickets and their associated details using regular expression and i let you read the rest so how should the second line of the expression shown in the graphic be modified to ensure that all valid ticket numbers are identified regardless of how many new tickets are added so in this uh, expression presented in the exhibit this one is causing the issue because here in the quantifier uh, it will be selected is exactly two digits and that is what causing the issue in the developer side so option one is wrong because this will also limit the number of digits to only two and three and the second one is also wrong this will 
this will limit the result as well to only three digits and the third option is we're looking at digit not the literal uh, part so this one is wrong and the last one is the only option and this one is correct because it will look for at least one or more uh, digit in the ticket number so this should be the correct answer you are working with an application that allows all types of input methods for the type interactivity which property should be enabled for the fastest execution well um empty field send window messages and click before typing properties only have 50 percent speed the only property with 100 percent speed here is the simulate type so this property can also use for background execution and, and it also auto empty field so the answer should be Simulate type. What is a key advantage of a robotic enterprise framework dispatcher process using Q? Well, um, dispatcher does not read from orchestrator Q because it only adds items, so this option is wrong. And the framework does not create the queue by default, so this option is also wrong. And this is probably the closest answer. Well, we can build a dispatcher project without using the framework template. So one of the advantages of using a template is you already have an error handling mechanism, so you don't have to do it from scratch. And the framework can also support multiple sources of or applications. So this will be my answer. And this option is wrong because the dispatcher and performer cannot be the same robot in real world project. So let's go to the next question. The output variable of an extract structured activity contains company names and stack symbol. Which activity will return the company name for a specific input stack symbol? Well, select item activity. This is used for UI automation element, so not this one. And the lookup range activity. This is used for Excel application, so not that one. So both the get row item and lookup data table are part of the data table. So which one do you think is the answer? Well, let's try to use them to find out. And here I have a workflow with a build data table activity. The table contains two columns, the stack symbol and the company name. And the output of this activity is the DT stacks variable. So for example, we have a symbol tsla and we want to return the company name of that stack symbol so to do that let's try to use the get row item activity get row item let's drag that to the workflow and here we can see that this activity requires that you already know what the data row is and we don't have it yet and this activity is not for searching data in a data table so we cannot use it so let me delete this one so this is not the answer let's try the lookup data table activity all right and then here we can input the symbol in the column name and then for the data table we'll use the data stocks and then for the lookup value, we need to input the stock symbol, which is the TSLA. And then input the company name here in the uh, column name of the target column property. Company name. And then for the cell value and row index let's assign this variable that i created and we will add a log message to print the row index and the cell value well it also it is also a good thing for you to see how this activity is, should be used so i will just put here row index Plus the row index that to string because that's an integer variable and we'll just add a new line and then the uh, comp 
company or the cell value which is the company name so that is cell value let's hit ok and let's run this file and see if it will be able to get the company based on the provided stock symbol and here it shows that the company name is tesla and the row index is 2 which is the right answer if we validate here in the build data table activity so for the answer to that question sorry if it <laughs> takes up some time to explain the activity the answer should be look up data table let's go to the next question <clears throat> a developer decided to create a process using a state machine what is the correct execution sequence of the part in the state activity so first is the activities in the entry section second is the activity in the exit section these are the two uh, part of the state when you add it to your workflow oops they should be two and next before we can add destination we need to configure the transition trigger action first so this should be the third step and then configure the activities in the destination state let's go to the next question so a developer obtains an employee id from a website and store it in the variable employee id each id is a nine characters string which starts with the letter AHK followed by six random digit so if the developer needs to extract the digits from the string which expression can be used so here I have a workflow using the different string function so we can see which one works so let's run to test so the replace function get an error but here is the output for the uh, trim last index of and the substring and we can see that the trim syntax produces the needed output well technically the developer can use some of the string function by just changing the syntax but in this uh, exhibit or scenario the answer is the trim function so let's select that next page <clears throat> 